Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the 220 Odyssey Symposium tutorial um, for the common data model and for the vocabularies. Um, this is the first block out of three blocks that you're going to learn today, all that you need to know about the OMOP CDM and the vocabularies. And this first block, um, you're going to hear two things. Um, first, I will be um, presenting you a little bit of the introduction of uh, Odyssey and OMAP and where it's coming from um, and how it works. Um, and then Melanie will start getting right into the details and start with the vocabularies and the concepts in the vocabularies and their mappings. That's the first block um, out of three. Uh, after which you're going to do um, an exercise. My name is Christian Reich. Um, I'm vice president um, for real world solutions at a company called IQVIA, which is a contract research organization. Um, and I also have been involved in Odyssey and OMOP for a very long time, um, now more than 10 years, um, in, um, in all sorts of uh, um, um, circumstances. And uh, this tutorial is the first one, which is entirely online. So it's a little bit different than uh, what we used to do in the past. So for us, this is also a new experience. But let's move right in. Um, Odyssey. What is Odyssey? Um, Odyssey is a an open source, multi-stakeholder, interdisciplinary collaborative. It has an enormous amount of traction. It is, exists all over the world. As you can see, each of these red tacks are um, collaborators, people who either have data or uh, have expertise in the area of large scale um, analytics of uh, medical data. Um, there are almost 3,000 active users um, 25 work groups, almost 200 uh, databases which are in OMAP and participate in research. Um, in 21 countries, we literally have every continent covered expect, except um, Antarctica. How does it work? Um, what does it do? Um, as I said, um, it's, an, it's a collaborative. It came out of a predecessor project called OMAP. Um, OMOP Odyssey, you don't have to learn what it really stands for because these have now become words uh, of their own in their own account. Um, but there was a project called OMOP uh, between the FDA and the pharmaceutical industry who um, ran a very large scale experiment to find out which of the typical available large scale databases um, can be used in order to do drug surveillance, looking for side effects of drugs that are on the market. And what of the scientific and analytical methods um, can be used? And this project already was open, uh, freely um, accessible to everybody. And uh, its task was to inform the public of how to do this at scale in a systematic manner. At the end of OMOP, the investigators, these people here, one of them is me, um, decided that this is a project which is, has been, has provided um, deep insight, but we are far from ready. We are far from having solved the problem of how we can study observational data and, um, and learn about the effects of interventions, good effects and bad effects. And so that was the birth of Odyssey. O-H-D-S-I is pronounced Odyssey. And like um, the journey that Odysseus made after coming out of the Trojan War, um, going home, it took him 19 years to go home. And it's a journey with lots of different adventures. We also believe it's a long journey with lots of different adventures to solve the problem of how we can provide, how we can get sufficient insight into um, medical care, um, into interventions of healthcare 
whether it's drugs or other types of intervention, until we can say that we have cracked that nut and solved the problem. Odyssey is in a, is in a collaborative where everybody can participate. You don't have, there's no uh, precondition. Um, the, the purpose is to create the standards, the methods, the tools, and the actual conduct, the actual research um, on all sorts of different types of questions um, in medical research. And it's um, again public and open, all the artifacts are visible, they're free on the internet. Um, it's no, no longer a pharmaceutical project, it's now very interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary um, academics, government, um, small companies, large companies, and it's no longer US-based, but almost in the US. Um, Odyssey is all over the world, as you have seen. Um, what's the magic? What's the magic of, uh, um, of Odyssey and um, why is it so productive? Um, it changes the paradigm of how this is done. So if you think traditionally of how epidemiology research was done um, or real world evidence type research as the, the industry calls it was done is you had a question in this particular case the question is um, what's the adherence to my drug in the data asset I own and what you did is you have a question and it was like an appliance and the appliance had to uh, be plugged into the data the medical data and um, that's what the data look like so all data always look completely different and this is you know wherever you go every hospital has their, has their data assets where the patient data are in insurance companies have them um, all sorts of other institutions who, who have uh, data assets to do research it always looks different every single time even though the underlying process is the same. Patient has a problem, goes to the doctor, gets diagnosed, gets treated. And so what do we do? In order to ask a question, we wire it up, okay? We run a SAS or an R script, which will answer one question in one database. And after a while, it looks like this. It's not scalable. There are all these scripts running around. Uh, it's not transparent. It's very expensive. You need uh, people who, who are highly qualified of doing this slow. Um, studies usually rarely take less than half a year. So any question you're asking has to be relevant still in half a year's time, at least. Um, Non-technical people cannot do that. You have to be a programmer. You have to be a data scientist. Or a statistician. Obviously we use this metaphor for a reason um, because if you're used to a standard then um, it, it's so glaringly obvious that everybody should adhere to the standard and that's the way to do it that if you don't have the standard you feel like there's something missing or something wrong right. For example with electricity you never think about buying an appliance and whether or not it will fit at home uh, into the outlet. It will. You only notice that there could be a problem if you travel uh, internationally and then you realize you forgot your power adapter. Um, then you know that the then you realize the the value of a standard. So, just to to use that to, to uh, develop this metaphor more. Of course, what it should look like is like this, right? All the data should look the same. And you should be able to run your question and you should be able to run a whole lot of other questions, mortality, source of business, safety signals. You should just rely that, you know, the Tesla and the toaster will fit into your outlet. What this, that does is it builds like a little um, community, a little cottage industry of people who build very good appliances. They build analytical packages that are highly specialized and well de designed and developed, much better than what you can do if you're just a, 
a data scientist don't have to hack up your code. Also, the data assets, a lot of effort can be spent into making them really high quality. So this is the, this is, uh, these are effects of, uh, of a standard. We call the standard for the data, the OMOM, OMOP common data model, still called OMOP, even though it could as well be called Odyssey now, but nobody's gonna change that anymore because everybody's used to that term. OMOP common data model, that's what the data are in. And Odyssey tools or Odyssey methods are the, um, the appliances, um, the use of the data for scientific purposes. Um, what that means, if you can do data, uh, analyze data in a standardized way, has two effects which may not be immediately obvious. Effect number one is you don't have to be next to the data anymore. The data could be far away. I can write a query and the data are in Korea, in China, in the UK, in Japan, in India, in Israel. The data don't have to come to the analytics. The analytics can go to the data. That is very powerful. Second one effect is I don't need to actually get the data. They can stay where they are. They can stay behind their firewall. They can stay in the institution that generated them in the first place. They know how to protect the data. We don't need data use agreements. We don't need any spe specific infrastructure to put, protect patient data. They're already protected in the hospital. All I do is I send them a little piece of code that asks a scientific question. And that is totally kosher. If you can do this, if you can do be remote and you can leave the data where they are inside their, um, uh, inside their um, environment, natural environment, um, you can build a network. A network means that there are different players. Some of them have more than one data assets. Some of them have just one data asset and they can come together and do network studies. They can ask the same question distributed over many different places. Okay. And the, it's like Facebook. Everybody can befriend anybody. Everybody can do a study with anybody. There's nobody in the middle at Odyssey, not me, not Patrick, not George, nobody who decides whether or not you are allowed to run a study with another data uh, uh, provider. It is entirely open and everybody has the opportunity to, to uh, bring up any type of question and invite anybody else uh, in participating in answering uh, this, this question. Therefore, Odyssey, there are a whole number of uh, very large um, network uh, studies. Some of them are published, some of them are ongoing. All of them are in the public internet, available to anybody who wants to participate. Um, they've been very successful. There are also a lot of studies which are not public. People just do them and they, they're either because their commercial companies don't want to be public or because they want to do the research and then publish when they're ready. There is no predefined way how you have to do things. The foundation is there is a common data model so we can do things all in the same way. And there is an open collaborative where people can participate, opt in into any type of research that they feel interested and comfortable doing. Um, with that, that's really the intro. That's what you need to know about OMOP and Odyssey and how it works. Um, I'd like to hand over now and stop the, you know, the boring interest talk. And so you can actually get uh, to the real uh, content. Uh, I want to introduce uh, Melanie Filofsky. She's a lead uh, data and business analyst at uh, Odysseus. Um, and she has been part of the Odyssey community for over five years. So she's really now a veteran and knows exactly um, what she is doing. Uh, Melanie. Thank you, Christian. My name is Melanie Filofsky, and I'm going to talk about source codes, concepts, and mapping your source codes to standard concept IDs. There are four origins for source code. The first three are Odyssey supported. 
They may come from an international terminology or coding system, such as SNOMED or ISPT, or they may be country specific, like the United Kingdom's read codes, Belgium has BDPM for their drug vocabulary. There's various ICD codes systems that are country specific, and the CVX codes are vaccine codes in the United States. Um, they may also come across as free text strings within your source data that are supported by Odyssey vocabularies. Things like centimeters, um, kilograms, pounds, and other units of measurements, or drug routes for um, drug administrations, intravenous, oral, buccal. And a lot of times we see lab results come across as free text strings, positive, reactive, negative, um, and so on. The fourth birthplace for source codes is specific to the data set or the source system. Electronic health records, case report forms, registry and claims data may have a little bit to a lot of custom codes at their source. Now let's review the definitions for the different categories of concepts. We have non-standard concepts, which are the unique representation of your source code. This is what you have within your data. Then we have the standard concepts. These are used for standardized analytics and by the Odyssey tools such as Atlas for network queries. And then we have the classification concepts. The classification concepts allow us to perform hierarchical queries to retrieve concepts needed to create concept sets for phenotype definitions. Um, an example of these are the ATC codes for drugs or MEDRA for the different um, categories of conditions. The standard Concepts is what you need. The non-standard source concepts are what you have. So let's talk about mapping these um, non-standard source concept IDs to the standard concepts IDs. You do this using your Odyssey Supply Mapping Table, which is a concept relationship table. We give this to you when you download your vocabularies um, and your concept tables. An analyst is able to take an ICD list of non-standard concept codes and transform it to the standard concept so you can use it in network research or with Atlas and other Odyssey tools. Okay. So let's talk about mapping these source codes to standard concept IDs. So first, you have your source code, you map it to a standard or non-standard concept ID. Either one is acceptable because all non-standard concepts map to standard concepts. Don't map it to the classification concept IDs because these are used outside the clinical event tables for research only. Now, if your vocabulary is known, you can use that to retrieve your concept ID. If your vocabulary is unknown, but your domain is known, use your domain to retrieve your concept ID. If you don't have an Odyssey um, supported source code or source vocabulary, you're going to need to custom map your local source code to a standard concept ID, and I'll discuss that in a little bit. So scenario one, you have a source code that is available as an Odyssey support by an Odyssey supported vocabulary. So right here in the first line, we have source code 614-62000. You know that this is a SNOMED code and the description is malaria. So if you're going to use SQL on this, you take it, your source code 614-62000, that's equal to your concept code, and you know your source vocabulary ID is SNOMED and you do a lookup in the concept table. We're going to take a look at this in Athena, so that way the non-technical folks can also see how it's done. So you put your, your source code into your search bar, and then you have to signify what your vocabulary is, and we know that it's coming from SNOMED. And you'll see here on your first line, it pulls back um, malaria, with the source code is 614-62000, the vocabulary is SNOMED, and here's your concept ID, 438-067. We can also do it with um, United Kingdom's read codes. They have a source code of A663D00 for Zika fever. We do the lookup in SQL, or we can do it in Athena, put it into our search bar, say we want the read code. Right here is our, our concept ID of 454-89-770. This is for our source code for Zika fever coming from the read vocabulary. This is a non-standard concept ID, and that's okay because you can map this to the standard concept ID for Zika fever. And then our last example here is an ICD-10 CN code. 
um, of A92.3, and this is West Nile virus infection. This is an interesting one is because this source code right here, if you just search on the source code and you don't signify which vocabulary you need, you'll come up with many different um, uh, concept IDs. So you have your source code here in 92.3. They all mean the same thing for the ICDs. But as you can see over here, so you have the different vocabularies that this comes from. ICD-10-GM is the German um, ICD vocabulary. KCD-7 is Korean ICD codes. ICD-10 is the World Health Organization's set of ICD codes. ICD-10-CM is used in the US. ICD-10-CN is used in China. And CIM-10 is used in France. So it's very important to specify, when you specify your code, that you also specify your vocabulary ID because you will pull back many different um, concept IDs. In scenario two, your source code is a text string coming from different domains and different areas throughout your source data set. So for this one, we're going to take a look at centimeters, which we know is a unit of measurement, and it's being used right now uh, for unit of measurement in a height table for your demographics or in vital signs. So when you look this up, though, you're going to match this source string to the concept name, and you're going to match your um, source domain ID um, to the domain ID in the concept table. So instead of using vocabularies, we're using units here, and we're using the source string as the name. So let's take a look at this in Athena. So we type in centimeters. We haven't specified what domain we wanted yet. And it will pull us back two centimeters right here. One comes from UCUM, the other comes from the Nebraska lexicon vocabulary. But as you'll see, they both have the domain ID of units. Um, the first line is standard, and the second line is non standard. So when your analyst looks this up here, centimeters, if they pull back this code, that's okay. It is non standard, and it will map to the standard concept ID. This one right here is a standard concept ID, so you look it up and it maps to itself as a standard. Um, next example is for an intravenous route for drug administration. So once again, we're going to take our source string, map it to the concept name, we're going to take our domain ID of route and also match that to the domain ID in the concept table. And the thing that it looks like this, we return a lot of different um, return a lot of different concept IDs for a concept name of intravenous. These come from many different vocabularies, and you will see that these have come from many different domains over here. We have maze value, observation, drug, route, and another code for observation. When you put your source data into the common data model, you, can, you know that this intravenous is a route for your drug administration. So you need to make sure you say that your domain ID equals route because only um, this concept right here, 4171047, will be allowed in the field for your drug route. These other ones, observation, measurement value, won't be allowed in your drug table for the route of the drug administration. Our second scenario, or our Last uh, scenario for scenario two is the source string for female. This comes from the gender domain, and usually you see this in your demographics table or your patient table. Looking this up, we have a whole entire screenshot for female. There's actually 14 different um, um, concept IDs for female. And just like the last one for the drug route administration, you'll see that these come from many different vocabularies and many different domains. And a lot of these are standard. These are standard concepts, but these are to be used in the measurement value for your lab results or as a condition in the condition occurrence table. The first line right here is the Odyssey supplied one. It has a vocabulary of gender, and that's an Odyssey um, supplied uh, concept for us, 8532 for female. Now our source goes mapping. This is our last scenario here. Is you have um, source data that maybe is country-specific ICD code or drug vocabulary that hasn't been incorporated into the Odyssey CDM. So you can ask Odyssey to incorporate it into the vocabulary. 
Um, to be honest, the line is kind of long and this does take time to incorporate a, a full um, vocabulary into the common data model. However, if you have a strong use case such as COVID-19, the codes and the mappings to standard concept IDs can get incorporated very quickly, practically overnight. So that enables network research to take place. Um, also, a little bit of money goes a long way with an open source community. It makes things move a little bit quicker. Or you can custom map your local source codes to standard concept IDs. Um, you would use a concept ID greater than um, 2 billion. These have been reserved for use by the community and will never clash with an Odyssey supplied concept ID. You create a concept record for the source code and then you create the concept, you create a linkage in the concept relationship table between your source concept ID that you created and your standard concept ID. Um, come see my poster at this year's symposium to learn more about it.